All right, thank you, Ross. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, uh, would would just echo that. Super, super proud of Darian. Uh, just excited for him. We uh, let the team know last night, and you know, those are those are the type of awards that that you know I love to see us win. I, we we've won a Campbell Trophy here. We've had uh, people on the Good Works team. Uh, we've won the Bowden Award. Uh, we've had. Uh, I guess we'll put the Warfel Trophy on, on alert here. I think that's, that's a, another one that kind of fits uh, what we're all about here. Uh, but, man, this is, a, this is an award that I've seen many, many times given out. I've, I've been at the ESPN Awards show uh, many times and, and, and have listened to uh, the presentation on the Disney Award and what it's all about. And, you know, it's, it's a great award. It's a great honor for Darian. This is, this is the most inspirational figure in college football. And it's not necessarily a player or a coach or whatever, but the most inspirational figure. And we've had, you know, lots of uh, people. Uh, in particular, I remember a couple years ago, uh, Tyler Trent, uh, you know, winning it and how special uh, that was. Um, and uh, so, you know, this is this is awesome. And Darian, what a great example he is. You know, he's a uh, uh, undersized running back and but a really good player. And you know, had a couple of ACL surgeries in high school, and still, you know, put the work in, chased his dream, and not only did he chase his dream, but he accomplished his dream, and and has become a good player for us here at Clemson. I mean, he's a very productive guy, and and has become a great leader, uh, an inspirational leader uh, within this locker room and in this building, and you know, that's to me is what it's all about. It's 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 uh, you know, making the best of what you have and uh, working every day to be the best version of you uh, and doing it with, with uh, uh, joy and doing it in a way that impacts those around you in a, in a very positive manner. And, and Darian has certainly done that uh, with this team, uh, the community and beyond. So I'm really, really proud of him, happy for him and, and uh, just a great, a great honor. Um, but uh, as far as, you know, us, uh, you know, sad that our home season is over, uh, but it was a great finish for us this past week. Um, you know, uh, just just really appreciate our fans for showing up this year and giving us a, the best. Uh, uh, even in this in this in, in environment we're all in, giving us the best you know home atmosphere out there. Really appreciate our fans for that. So uh, proud of our team. Um, and uh, but from this point forward, we're we we got to go get it done on the road and. Got a big challenge this week going up to Blacksburg. Uh, you know, looking forward to it uh, because this will be a, a different type of challenge than what we've seen. Uh, night game, Blacksburg, the weather, snow, rain, you name it. Uh, so, to me, that's a uh, that's a that's a great challenge and uh, something we look forward to. But uh, their football team. You know, first of all, when you look at their offense, um, you know, and a lot of times again, you look at a record and. Uh, or at least fans may look at a record and, and, and be quick to judge somebody. Uh, but that's not what we do as coaches. Uh, when you look at this offense, they're ninth in the nation in rushing. Uh, they're fourth in the nation in, in yards per carry, uh, almost six yards a carry. And the quarterback is second in the country in all-purpose yards. So this is a, this is a, a real, real challenge for our defense uh, this week as far as uh, schematically what they do. I mean, they're, they're really well coached. They, they've got a great scheme. And, you know, basically it's option football uh, in a nutshell with, with, with a guy who can throw the ball really, really well and, uh, and, and a bunch of, bunch of misdirection and eye candy to go with it. You know, screen game, boots, wheels, you know, all the play action, every run they have, they got a pass off of it. All the tricks, throwbacks, you name it. Uh, they got it, and uh, but it starts with running the football. Very veteran offensive line. This is probably one of the more physical groups that we'll that we've seen. They play well up front. Uh, they got some guys outside that have made some big plays for them. Uh, but it all starts with this quarterback. I mean, he's a he's a really dangerous football player uh, for sure. And like I said, he's second in the perp second in the country in, in, in all purpose. So uh, very very good player. Uh, got a big challenge there. Uh, especially with the style of play. And then defensively, you know, listen, uh, Virginia Tech uh, has had a long history of, of, of uh, defensive football. And, uh, you know, they're a 4-3 front. And, 
you know, they've had, they've been kind of up and down a little bit with some of their personnel, but they've had an open date. So I'm sure they'll have, be getting some guys back and, and, and be as healthy as they've been in a long time. But same thing, they play physical, uh, they get after you up front. They, they're about a 50% blitz team and bring a lot of pressure. Uh, so we've got to do a great job and, uh, you know, matching up on that side. Uh, so looking forward to it though, and uh, hopefully uh, continuing to improve our team. I thought we did some good things last week that, that we can build on, uh, but still plenty of mistakes that, that we can learn from. And, uh, you know, also excited about some of our guys getting back. We came through the game really well and uh, still, still moving in a good direction as far as the health of our team. Um, but uh, with that, I'll take your questions. Well, I don't know that, you know, so, I mean, nobody's told me that at this point, but, you know, if something happens, then, then uh, that could definitely be a possibility. But uh, right now, we got we to gotta go win two games. Uh, oh, I definitely think it's a big deal. I mean, you know, we we just kind of nature of where we are this year, personnel-wise, uh, our OL has had to play a bunch of snaps, a bunch of snaps. And uh, we've played a lot of physical football, you know, a bunch of physical teams in a row, going back to Virginia, uh, to Miami, to BC, to Notre Dame, you know, a bunch of physical football, Syracuse, physical, physical football team. And uh, so, uh, you know, it's a it's a tough game and in an incredibly tough position, uh, especially when you don't have a very good rotation. But we've we've gotten a little better. We've been able to develop a little depth. We got some guys that I think are, even though they haven't played as much, I think they're in a much better place now to be able to go in there and help us if we need them. Uh, but there's just you know, it, we're just different than we were last year, where we had a lot of these guys, you know, Bach and Cade and. Putnam rolling in there, uh, McFadden, all those guys were rolling in there to, uh, uh, along with a bunch of uh, veteran seniors in Pollard and Jermaine Ankrum and, and Cervinka and John Simpson. I mean, we were a really, really deep group uh, last year. And so it's definitely, definitely part of it. So there's no question uh, for everyone. Um, the open date for us was, was huge. And, uh, you know, just guys getting fresh and I think we're in a good place right now, and, and hopefully we can we can really finish uh, the way we want to finish. Yeah, I mean he just same Trevor. I mean he he was out, you know, whatever. 10 days, I guess, um, yeah. and uh, those 10 days, he, was, he, he wasn't here physically, but he was here every single day. He was in our Friday night meetings. He was in our position meetings. He, he, he missed the one game, but he traveled with us to Notre Dame, and uh, it was just a part of everything, no different. And then, you know, he was just a day or so off from being able to play at Notre Dame because of the cardiac protocol that you have to go through. And you know you can't speed that up. You got to go through that the right way. And so uh, you know he's great. And then he was right back at practice after the Notre Dame game that Monday, and and just repping every snap. You know, and and uh, unfortunate we had a good open date week, a, a week of preparation, and then great week of preparation getting ready for Florida State. Um, and so I mean really nothing different. And then just went back to work and. Uh, so he just, he just, you know, the thing about Trevor, and you hear it all the time, you know, he, he literally take his, his practice reps are game reps. That's just how he goes about his business. And that's why he's so consistent in the game environment. The game is slow to him. Uh, fortunately, we have a defense that, that can create, uh, 
that that game mindset because uh, it's a challenge every single day on our practice field for both sides of the ball. But it all comes back to just his approach, his demeanor, um, and uh, you know. So it was great. He had great. He had great practices, great preparation, and even though we didn't have game tape uh, for a few weeks there, we had a lot of practice tape and uh, a lot of competitive plays, two-minute drills, team pass, you know, one-on-ones, you name it. Uh, so he just just getting back into game action and and uh, picked up where he left off. No, yeah, uh, I, I don't worry about it anymore. I mean, early in the season, especially the first couple weeks, I mean, it was like you were a little freaked out about it. I mean, I remember our first trip to Wake Forest, and I'm like, okay. And again, that's why we expanded the rosters to 80 from 72 so that we would have more players available on Friday if you had positives, especially if you were the road team. And I remember, uh, you know, the, our first game, you know, that first week, you just, you know, every – Every, and, and now you get the test back quicker and all that stuff, but here comes that text, and you're like, okay, and you know, but uh, so it just just it, it just became a kind of a part of our our deal as we went through the season. And now I, I don't even really it doesn't even phase me, uh, and, and and our guys have done such a good job. I mean, we've we the, the last positive we had as a player was that Friday at, in Tallahassee. Uh, we've not had a single player positive since. And uh, so, you know, we don't have a lot of issues. Our guys have done a great, great job, uh, you know, in being committed and sacrificing and being disciplined uh, in, our, in our administration, our medical, everybody's been amazing as far as how we've mitigated things. And it's shown that the protocols have worked. Um, so, but, you know, it just is what it is. You know, I don't, I just, you don't even work. It's just like the injury report, okay? All right, this guy's out. You, you got to, as coach, you, you can't sit around and, and dwell on it. You got to, you got to have the next guy ready to go, and you got to find a way to give your give your team a chance to win. No, he, he was actually uh, – uh, we had a, a staff member who, who was out uh, for the game, and uh, so he was able to be elevated uh, to on the field for the game. Uh, so, uh, you know, he, he, he was just doing his job on game day. He did a great job uh, uh, with those guys. I have not. Also, um, I talked to Jamie Chadwell yesterday and asked him, you know, who he looked to for models, influences for his program. Uh, he mentioned you and he mentioned his mom. Not, uh, maybe not in that order, but anyway, <laughs> you hear stuff like that all the time. But, you know, it still must mean something to you that successful young coaches look to you like that. What, what do you think about that? Well, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, we just want to be a great program. We've always, from day one, we've wanted to build a model program that, that uh, could be a model of consistency, uh, not just win, but, but win the right way and win in a way that, that uh, you know, builds young people. You know, I've always said it's not the X's and O's, it's the hearts and souls and, uh, that you're dealing with every single day. And, you know, if we win a bunch of games, um, but we don't impact and shape lives doing it, then it's just, it's just, it's just, it's not worth the paper that it's printed on. In my, in my opinion, that's just our approach and always has been. And, uh, you know, but that's what we set out to do was to build a program that other teams would want to be like, uh, because I know what we do here is, is right. I know what we do here is, is the way it should be for young people. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hope that lots of other programs 
you know, want to do things the way Clemson wanna, want, does things. Uh, we're certainly not perfect, and there's no perfect people. There's no perfect places. Uh, but, but we got a lot of good people with a lot of great intentions. And, uh, and I think that's what it's all about. And so uh, that's a great compliment. Uh, he's a great young coach and he got a bright future. I've known him for a while and followed him. And uh, he's done an amazing job uh, down there at Coastal. And, and uh, again, just, just really proud of his success. But, uh, you know, I, I love taking opportunity and time to share with other coaches and try to help other coaches, but, you know, because I think that's important. You know, I, 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 it's not like we, we – I want to be able to, to, you know, I tell our players all the time, hey, take what we have here and take it with you. Um, you know, and again, it's unique. What we have here is, is special. It's unique. It's uncommon. And uh, uh, you, you look at the last decade, we're the second winningest team in the country, and nine out of the last ten years, we're top ten academically with Duke and Northwestern. You know, that's, that's very unique, and we've done it our way. We've done it the Clemson way, and we've stayed the course. And, uh, and now we have a program uh, that, that, is, that is rooted uh, in, in culture and rooted in doing the right things uh, and, and just, you know, always uh, looking to get better, you know, always striving for uh, excellence in all we do. We're... we're we have discipline, we have accountability. There's always gonna be challenges, there's always gonna be disappointments, there's always gonna be failures along the way, but it's how you respond to those things. And uh, ultimately, it's the type of men that come out of your program, period. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I put our program up against anybody uh, and what we've been able to do with, with the amount of graduates, uh, the academic consistency and excellence that we've had uh, to go along with consistency on the field. That's a, that's a unique thing in college football. So, um, you know, we take a lot of pride in, in, in that aspect. Hey, Coach, this is Todd Shaughnessy from Spartanburg. Back to Rancher for a minute. What do you see for him beyond just playing days? Is he a coach? Is he a politician? What is he? He's whatever he wants to be. I mean, there's, there's you, know, you know, Darren Rancher can do whatever he wants to do. Whatever he sets his mind to do, he'll be successful. Uh, you know, no doubt about it, because he's equipped. You know, he's, he knows how to work hard, knows how to persevere. He's got all the tools that you need to be successful in life. He's smart. Uh, he, he's he, he's an excellent problem solver. He's good with people. Uh, you know, so whatever, whatever he wants to do, um, he'll be successful. Yeah, well, again, that goes back to the culture of our program, and it's been that way for a long time around here. You know, we, 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 uh, you know, I, I, they're all the same to me. Uh, they really are. Whether you're a walk-on or, or the star player, you, you still got to be accountable. You got to have discipline. You got to be committed. Uh, you got to, you got to work your tail off to be the best version of you. That's all I want from every kid that comes through here, is for them to become the best version of themselves. And uh, and to be committed, and and to be a great teammate, uh, and and we've we've had we've had a lot of guys that have been walk-on players or whatever, uh, maybe not the starter or whatever, but they're great leaders. You don't have to be a. Uh, we've had some starters that are terrible leaders, uh, so you know, it doesn't you know that doesn't always equate. It's great when your best player is also your best leader and those things. That's great. That's not always the case. Uh, leadership can come from everyone, you know. Uh, it can be a freshman. I remember Christian Wilkins, he was a leader the day he got here. I mean, literally. He, he wasn't sitting around waiting on somebody to, to lead him. Uh, he was a leader the day he got here as a true freshman. And we've had walk-ons uh, that way. We've had fifth-year seniors that, that didn't play at all that had unbelievable respect from their teammates. Uh, so, you know, uh, that that's – the opportunity to lead on a football team comes through your actions, comes through your work ethic, and that's not always seen by people on game day. Uh, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not.
Well, I mean, if our goal was for him to win the Heisman, he'd be leading the Heisman uh, right now. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but, you know, that's not our goal. Uh, you know, our goal is to, is to win the game. And, uh, you know, he's, 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 if you looked at, I think if you look at, uh, I, I think it was Tim Beret put it out or something, it was a stat he put out. He's only, he's only played in like 20 of, of his 37 fourth quarters that he's been in. So almost half his games, he hasn't played in the fourth quarter. You know, he's been on a dominant football team. You know, we've won more games the last five years than anybody in the history of college football. Uh, he's been a dominant player. And unfortunately, the Heisman is a lot about stats. And Trevor's stats are through the roof. Uh, you know, I mean, they're, 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 they're crazy stats. But, you know, he, he, and they could be, if that was our number one goal was to, to win a Heisman, uh, you know, we'd already have one. But it's not the goal. You know, this, this is not a, a program built on individual things uh, or built on team. You know, we want to win the trophy. We want to win the team trophy. And uh, so if it happens, it happens. I mean, uh, the best player in the country is Trevor Lawrence. I, I mean, I don't really care what anybody says. And there's a lot of great players out there, but the best player in the country is Trevor Lawrence. Uh, so it's just the way it is. And, and, and we, you know, he doesn't need to win the Heisman for that to be the case. I mean, uh, most logical people out there know that. But, you know, it's all about stats and, you know, all this type of stuff. This guy is play in, play out. If you really uh, watch him, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And that's why he'll be the first pick in the draft. And it won't be close. It won't be close. It does. It does. I mean, you look at the development of Trenton Simpson, you know, with Mike Jones going out, and all of a sudden he's forced, and, and, and man, he's and, and he's gotten better and better and better. And uh, you, you look at Malcolm Green, he's a true freshman, and he's developing and he's coming. Fred Davis has gotten a lot of good snaps. Where, you know, we've developed all of those safeties have gotten some experience. All of our backers have gotten some experience. Uh, you know, just really – Pleased with what Miles Murphy and Brzee have been able to do this year as true freshmen. Um, so, I mean, all across the board defensively, you know, we've had to mix and match all year. And so we're, we're getting to that point now where we've got, uh, you know, all these guys back. You look at the year, you know, Sheridan, he's, he's going to be back, but Sher Sheridan's had and uh, Mario. I mean, you know, they, we've had injuries. We've had a, we've had a little bit of everything uh, across the board. But guys that we've continued to play, you know, well, and uh, and we've been just forced to have to have to get guys ready in different roles and so forth. Uh, Skowski being out uh, has given a lot of guys opportunities. You look at what Baylen Specter's done this year. So where we are right now, uh, totality-wise, after nine games, it, it's it's really pleasing uh, as far as where we started from. Every aspect, from a, a depth standpoint, a functional depth standpoint, confidence, uh, you know, just knowledge and understanding of our scheme and what we're asking people to do, we're fundamentally better. Uh, we, we technically are, are, are more consistent. Uh, so I'm proud of, of what we've been able to do, and uh, I definitely think that that's a positive force, you know, down the stretch here. Well, unless you were living under a rock last week or so, I, I, I had a strong opinion then. Uh, so, you know. Uh, I don't necessarily mean it has to be against Florida State, but just yeah. anyone would be good. Or? Yeah, and, and you know, we didn't we didn't get to play the game, but we were, you know, we, we had a runaway bride. We were we were walking down the aisle, and uh, you know, so we were prepared. And and you know, it's not like you just didn't get to play. I mean, we we work you work all week. You're prepared. Um, so. Again, 
Um, I, I, whatever they tell us to do, I mean, that's the end of the day. But I, I, my strong opinion was was already already voiced. I'm sure there's video. You can probably find it somewhere. <laughs> but uh, do you think there's a benefit to, to whether it's Florida State, whether it's any other team? Is would you? I think if we like I think if we had to play a game, we should play the game that was scheduled. That's what I think. We shouldn't have to prepare for a twelfth game. We shouldn't, you know, we 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 we've had an eleven game schedule. We should play the game that we prepared to play. If 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 we are supposed to play a game. Thanks. Hey, coach, this is Trevor again. Um, coach Venables was telling us yesterday that he thought um, Skalski maybe he played uh, even earlier than he than he should have because he he won't he it meant so much to him to play in the in, on Senior Day. Um, the Buckus Award semifinalist list came out yesterday. He was not on it. A couple of Pac-12 guys were, were on it uh, despite playing three games. But is Skowski just one of those guys is much more valuable than his stat line? <laughs> yeah, no question. Uh, no doubt about it. He's, he, is an, he is a great player. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I personally didn't think he'd be back till Virginia Tech. But it just that's just the nature of who he is, and that was his goal was to get back for the pit game, and and he he achieved his goal. Dabo, it's Matt. Do you know right now how likely it is that, that y'all play a twelfth game? I have no idea. How, how weird is this season? Where I guess it's, a, it's you don't know if this is your last game or not, and you don't really know the future just how weird has it been <laughs> it's it's just the norm it's it just it's just tuesday in 2020 uh that's just the way it is so i'm just trying to win the day and uh and, and have a great tuesday practice i mean yeah that's it better be better be light on your feet in 2020 Devo, larry williams i guess piggybacking off of matt's weirdness question how weird is it to not know until you did when you were playing this week and I guess <laughs> the job of the folks I guess Mike Dooley and DJ having to having to plan for all that stuff do you have any insight into that how so, so that, what, that what's it what, what are you asking again just the, the unknown having to having to wait so long to hear about when you're playing this week and, and, oh, and, uh, oh! You talking about the kickoff time? Okay, I didn't know what you were talking about. I, I was like, I didn't know what you were talking about. I didn't understand. So yeah, we we know we're playing V Tech. We yeah, we just didn't know the time because, you know, they got all kind of drama going on. But uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're it's it's not that big a deal. I mean, the biggest issue is is just letting the we got to set the charter. We got to have playing times and all that. Um, but. That's not really that big a deal. Um, you know, we've got a noon schedule, we got a three thirty schedule, we got an eight o'clock schedule, and uh, so, you know, there there's certainly logistics involved. But uh, typically, you know a little bit earlier. But you know, so that way you can schedule your uh, get your itinerary done, get your buses lined up, and all that type of stuff. But um, you know, wouldn't wouldn't affect too much our Friday, uh, but definitely would affect the 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 Saturday routine for sure. Hey, Dabo, you, you uh, have had a lot of great players come through your program over the years, but when it comes to Trevor and Travis and the fact that you've gotten to have them together for three years, I mean, certainly with all the opt-outs this year, it would have been not unreasonable for Trevor to go that route. He was completely the opposite and pushing to be able to play I think almost all of us expected Travis to leave after last year, and he wanted to come back and play again. Um, what is the extra year of time that you've got with them, and, and maybe the overall the three years that you've had with them together on the same field? What's it been like to coach that? What's the impact that it's had on your program, the culture, the team, the, the, all of that? I um, mean, they've got a lasting legacy. I mean, it's it's. I love coaching all these guys, and and again, my goal was for them to be leaders, to be great teammates, to be the best version of themselves. And obviously you have a guy like Trevor Lawrence, well, the best version of himself, you got, you got a lot to work with. Uh, but man, I, I love all these guys, even the guy that maybe doesn't have as much ability, but man, let's, how good can we be? And you got to be willing to put the work in. And so when you have a guy like, like, in, like, you know, Trevor was, 
pretty amazing when he showed up here uh, and just his his development I mean it's incredible and he, him having another year to play it's just so prepared him uh, for the next step and and then Travis same thing man Travis is it's night and day the player he is I mean it's amazing what you can do in a year we all know that but and that's in life, but especially in football. Football is a developmental game, and that's why I always laugh when people think kids can just go from high school to the NFL. I mean, it's just such a lack of understanding uh, and, and a total disrespect for what it takes to play at that level and for these grown men that are playing at the highest level. It's just because football, it's just such a game of knowledge. Such, I mean, the physical aspect, the develop, and you, you can have some guys that physically look like they could go step into an NFL locker room. Uh, very few, but you could have a few in high school. But the knowledge, the technique, the fundamentals, the I mean, it's, it's just – it's incredible uh, the amount of development that has to take place uh, to give you a chance. And uh, I don't care how talented you are. Um, and, and so it's been awesome. You know, Trevor's just so developed, so much further along. The coaching that he's gotten, the, the challenge that he's had – the preparation, what he's seen, what the experience, uh, he's so prepared now. And then Travis, the same thing. You know, here's a kid that came in here as a kid that could just flat out run the ball. And that's just what he did. You give him the ball and he ran. And he was in an option attack. And, and now, you know, he is a complete player at his position. And that's come through putting the work in, through commitment, uh, working hard on his weaknesses, you know, being coachable. And, and now, as I've said many times, he's a Swiss Army knife. I mean, he, he, he can do anything. There's nothing he can't do uh, at his position. He is a complete player and so equipped. And him coming back this year and the way we've had to use him uh, has, has changed everything for him as far as his confidence and, and what he's going to bring to a team at the next level. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. I mean, he just broke C.J. Spiller's single season receiving record. I mean, if you'd have told me that Travis Etienne, the one that I saw as a freshman, was going to break Spiller's receiving record, uh, I would have never believed that. And uh, so, you know, it's amazing. And that's what I love about football. Again, it's, it's a developmental sport. And uh, if you put the work in, you're committed, you're going to get better. And, and he is just, this extra year has really, really helped him maturity-wise, knowledge-wise skill wise you name it all across the board uh, and and they love playing they love Clemson they love their teammates you know that's why they came back that's why they're here that's why they they wanted to play football uh, they like playing the game hey Dabo it's Phil Kornblut have you had any seniors tell you already that they want to take advantage of the opportunity to come back for another year and if you have any of those is it open arms you just welcome them all back if they want to come back? Absolutely. I'll take them all back. I told Travis I'll save number nine for him just in case. Uh, yeah, I've had a few that have told me that, that that's kind of where they're leaning. Uh, but, uh, you know, not going to get into all that now. But, um, yeah, I'd take them all back if they if – they, it's a – you know, there's a, it's a free year. Good player, and not just him. You know, at, 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 he well, goes from 25 to zero. I, I, he, he's worn two different numbers, but man, they, they and six gets in there. I mean, they got they got they're really good. I mean, they like I said, they're ninth in the country in rushing the football. Uh, they're fourth in yards per carry. The quarterback is a is a great runner, and and that's just how they're built. That's what they're committed to, and and then everything that comes off of that from a uh, play action standpoint. And uh, backs getting out of the backfield, you know, on the on the wheels and those type of things. They they stress you. I mean, they're they're this is a, a, a team schematically that really knows what they're doing, and and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to be ready. We're gonna have to play really well. Lots of discipline, um, and uh, you know, win win some matchups. Um, you know, win the line of scrimmage, and and affect this quarterback. But if you don't stop the run against these guys, you're in trouble. 
and and not every, you know they've like I said that's why they're ninth in the country. They've been pretty successful at it. Any additional questions for Coach Sweeney? Hey, Coach. All right, we're going to turn it over quickly to a special guest. Uh, hey, Coach, I've been instructed to ask the last question. What is it like for one of your players to win the Dizzy Spirit Award? Yeah, it's awesome, man. Uh, that's I, that's, that's kind of how I started the, the press conference. You know, those, those, are the kind, those are the type of awards that, that I want our program to be known for. The Campbell Trophy, the Disney uh, Spirit Award, the – the Bowden Award, uh, you know, we got we to see if we can find that, that, that Warfel Trophy in here somewhere along the way. You know, the AFCA Good Works team, I mean, those are, those are, those are great awards that I think any, any program should covet, at least, at least we do around here. So, uh, fine, glad that happened and uh, couldn't have happened to a better guy. So, we're all proud of you, Wrench, and I uh, know you'll represent us well. And I don't know, is there a free trip to Disney that comes with that? Hey, uh, that's, hey look, we're going to have to get something out Man, hey, hey, I'm all in for some Space Mountain. You know, <laughs> count me in. Maybe we'll get like a right. private Power Disney 10. trip. It'd be awesome. 